Hello! Welcome to Seedling School, a thing that I thought of, and we're going to try it. This is an experiment. I don't know if this is going to work, but you're here. Let's talk about it. So if you go to github.com slash seedling dash school dash o one dash front end project, this is a description of a project for you, the viewer, the person, the human being to complete. Um, and this project will be a front end website with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, and the website will communicate and integrate with a third-party web API. So first, let's talk about the goals of this project. Um, so in general, after you've created this project and, after, and, and while you're working on it, you're attempting to complete all of these goals. And, and the general goals are as follows. Demonstrate your ability to build basic multi-page front-end websites. Demonstrate your ability to deploy a website to the web so anyone can access it. Demonstrate your ability to debug code with Chrome slash Firefox DevTools. Uh, demonstrate your ability to manage a project with a tool like Trello. Demonstrate your ability to create wireframes and implement those wireframes. Uh, demonstrate your ability to complete a project to MVP, which stands for Minimum Viable Product, within 1.5 weeks. And demonstrate your ability to use a REST API tool to test requests to a third-party API. Um, now, we have a frequently asked questions section, but in terms of deadline, it's whenever. You can essentially start this project whenever you are available to start this project, but you should keep in mind that you should try to complete it within a fixed time frame. Um, I'll talk about at the end how you can start and, and um, start working on this project, and there will be a review process, and I can try to give feedback, um, but just think of this like you're starting this project now. These are, these are your goals. <laughs> uh, your goals for HTML are that you will demonstrate your ability to create HTML pages that link to each other. This will be a two-page website. You will demonstrate your ability to use semantic HTML tags, and you will also demonstrate your ability to use accessible alt tags. Um, now, in terms of JavaScript, you will demonstrate your ability to take in user input. I'll talk about it in your second, but uh, in a second. But the website you build should have a user input form or some checkboxes or a way to get input from the user to use in the API request. Um, you will demonstrate your ability to make API requests with front-end JavaScript. You will demonstrate your ability to handle cores, requests, and errors, because you're going to run into this uh, when you attempt to integrate with a third-party API. And you will demonstrate your ability to use and manipulate data from a third-party web API. Uh, you will demonstrate your ability to handle errors gracefully. So if the API isn't working or the user typed in something wrong, instead of the page just going blank or white, you should actually show uh, some error messages or different things like that. And lastly, demonstrate your ability to traverse and manipulate the DOM or the document object model with vanilla JavaScript. So the, the point of this project is to just use core JavaScript, JavaScript that's supported by the browser. I don't want you to use jQuery. I don't want you to use React. I don't want you to use Vue. I want you to write everything from scratch. Um, now, I'll talk about it in a second. There are certain types of third-party libraries you can use, like a data visualization library or a maps library. Um, or, or different things like that. But I want you to write the majority of the JavaScript um, and using DOM manipulation that actually makes the page work. Uh, and then lastly, for CSS, I want you to demonstrate your ability to use a CSS framework like Bootstrap or Bulma to create responsive and adaptive layouts. Um, now, I'll talk about it again, but a stretch goal is to not use a CSS framework. You could potentially write all of the CSS yourself, but these are the minimum goals and minimum requirements for every project uh, that gets submitted um, and has the potential for review. All right, so what are you going to build? You're going to build a two-page website. The first page is just a landing page. It'll have the title of the project, the description of the project, which will have what it is, why you built it, and how people can use it. You'll also link to your GitHub or your portfolio site. And uh, this landing page will link to the second page, which is the actual application page. This is the page that's going to have uh, the actual interaction with the user and contacting a third-party API. And then your second page, which is the application page, will take in user input, for example, a search form or things like settings, checkboxes, where you'll, you'll use those settings in your request to the API. And then um, you will then use that user input to contact a third-party API to get data. And then you will add that data to the web page. Um, and actually, let me add that to the list right here, because I totally forgot to say that. <laughs> There we go. Uh, and then lastly, your website will be deployed to a service like Netlify, Surge, Heroku, GitHub Pages, or Now, um, so that others can view, uh, view your website. Now, 
there may be a lot of things in here that you have never heard of or know, or know nothing about. You may not know what is a third-party web API, um, what is a wireframe, uh, what is cores, uh, what is the DOM. There, you might have a lot of questions, and part of uh, helping you with this project is that I will create lessons and videos to help you get through some of those things and learn about those things. Um, now let's talk about what a third-party web API is. So there are various things on the web that allow you to get data from them. There are weather APIs where you can get the weather forecast or what the current weather is. There are news and articles APIs where you can get like Reddit news or hacker news. There are movie APIs where you can list out movies and search and filter by when they were released or what is their title. There are APIs where you can search for images of a particular type. Uh, Wikipedia has an API where you can uh, actually get the contents of an article based on a search term. Um, there are nutrition APIs where you can pass it a particular name of a food and it will give you back all the nutritional content of that food. Um, there are recipe APIs where you can submit a request that is like uh, ingredients that should be in that recipe, and it will give you back a list of all the recipes. Um, and, and many, many, many others, and all of these make their data and, and um, are basically, yeah, they make their data available so that you can use it in your own website. Um, so there's a ton of different examples. And then I have linked here a list of public APIs. So if you go to this URL, you're going to see a ton of different types of APIs. So there's food and drink, there's shopping, there's music, there's news. These are all things that you could potentially use in your project. And they are, are there are things that you can integrate and add to your page. Um, and, and that's the point of this whole thing. So when you're looking at this page, you're, you're going to want to look for things to um, um, that, that do not have authentication. I'll talk about in a second what's out of scope, but I don't want you to build a backend. I don't want you to have a database. I don't want you to implement authentication. This project is solely for you to focus on building a front end website. So when you're looking at this page, you're going to want to focus on uh, APIs that do not require authentication that allow you to just make those API requests. Cool. Um, and here are some example project ideas that you might come up with. Um, allows, allow the user to enter stock names and view a real-time chart of stock price. So uh, you could find an API that lets you find uh, stocks, and you would use that. Uh, use a nutrition API to allow a user to enter the contents of their pantry to get nutritional information. Uh, use a movie API to allow a user to search for movies and descriptions and posters. Uh, use an image API to allow a user to search for their favorite and favorite their images. Um, now, like I said, out of scope is uh, an actual database in persistence, but um, a stretch goal is to use something like local storage or IndexedDB to save user, user settings in the browser itself. Uh, use a news API to search for news articles. Use a places or restaurant API to list restaurants near the user. You could get more complex and allow the user to filter by their favorite types or by price. Um, use the International Space Station API to show the current location of the International Space Station on a map. Uh, use a rocket launch history API to allow the user to see if a rocket was launched on a specific day. Um, you can get more complex with it, though. You can contact multiple APIs. You could create a trip planner where you use some sort of rideshare API to calculate the cost of a ride or a flights API to calculate the cost of a flight. You could use a places search API to find hotels near a given location and also use that same API to find things to do near a given location and then allow the user to kind of save a list or create an itinerary of their trip. Um, you could create, use a game stats API to allow the user to search for uh, top games of a given name, game. We could go on forever. There are so many different APIs and there are so many different things you can do with those APIs, but that's really the goal of this project. Um, so, and like I mentioned, you can use uh, like a data visualization library, a maps library, or like a PDF rendering library. Um, but other than that, I want you to write all of the JavaScript. Now, like I said, what's out of scope? No user login, no backend API, no backend database, uh, no Firestore or Firebase. This is purely a front end website where you're integrating with a third party API. Now, for the good stuff, how can you, the viewer, participate? First, copy the project description template into your own Git repo. So if you click this link here, um, this is a description template. So I want you to give me the project name and title, a two to three sentence description of what the project is going to do, what's your motivated motivation for creating the project, um, how will users interact with this website, will they type into a search form, will they check boxes, how are they actually going to use the website, um, you should list what third-party API you plan to use and link to that documentation. Um, you should list out your tech stack, so what CSS framework are you going to use, are you going to use any third-party libraries or anything else like that. 
And then lastly, what will be your process? So are you going to use Trello to manage um, the tasks that you have? How often are you going to commit your code? Um, are you going to test your website? Um, how are you going to design your website? Are you going to use wireframes? All of these things. But basically what you should do is copy this, um, create your own Git repo, paste this in and answer all of the questions. Now, once you've done that, um, you should create an issue on here. So um, what you shouldn't do is don't fork or clone this repo. Like you can, but I, th I think you shouldn't. Do not fork or clone this repo, create your own separate repo that has a good name. So you create a repo that's called um, My Pantry or uh, Crypto Real Time. Basically create a repo that is the name of the actual application that you're going to build. Um, and you're going to put this project description in there. So fill it out, push it up to your GitHub, and then open an issue on this repo. So up at the top here, you can click on issues. You're going to create a new issue. And in that issue, you should link to your GitHub repo with the project description. Um, and you'll link to what third-party API you plan to use and also give your two to three sentence description that's already in the document, but it'll be easier for me to see in the issue itself. So open that issue here, and then you can essentially begin working on the project. So we're gonna have different label labels in different stages of the project, but um, initially your project will be submitted slash description under review. If you would like feedback for me, like, hey, is this a good project idea? Am I gonna be able to do this? You can mention that there and I'll try to give feedback. Um, once you start on the project, you should comment and say, hey, I've started and I'm working on it now. If at any point you run into an issue and you need help or you need a lesson on some particular topic, you can leave a comment that says, hey, I have no idea what Cores is. Can you please do a lesson on that? Um, if you have a particular bug, like, hey, I've been banging my head against this. I can't get this working. Leave a comment. We can potentially help you with that. Um, once your project has been deployed, you can leave a comment with a deployed link. Um, also part of this is uh, we will potentially do code reviews. So myself and people in the community can look at your code and comment on, are these good coding practices? Are these bad? Um, and then lastly, we can give feedback on your project. So that's how you can participate. Um, like I said, there's no deadline for submissions, but for those of you that have happened to watch this video right now, um, let's say within uh, the next one and a half weeks or, or probably two weeks from now is when I will actually review these projects live on stream um, and uh, we'll have a chance to, to review them together. Cool. There's a whole list of stretch goals. So if you're not new to web development, but you still want to participate, there's so many more things that you can do above and beyond what we've asked for in the main goals. So you can take a look at those there. So that's the project description. Um, if you have any questions, put them as comments in this YouTube video. You can also ask questions on our Discord. Um, and also, once you've opened an issue, you can ask comments in the comment thread as well. So thank you so much. Hope to see you participating. See you next time.